Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Just got this in the mail today. We're going to do a quick chat about it before I actually start installing stuff. Burris XTR signature rings. These rings are not on a rail. They are two separate rings and they come with the cant adjustment inserts, which allow you to adjust the cant of your scope by playing with the inserts. These are made by Burris uh, at the time of this filming. I think they suggest the retails like 105 to 170. I could not find them on sale and I am a bargain shopper. They were right about 150. So out of the box, these are 34 millimeter tube rings. You've got your uh, rail uh, clamp here, your rail grabber at the bottom. You seem like they're really well made, nicely machined. Little Burris mon uh, name on the side there. You get three screws per side for the adjustments, right? And then if you see, you get these little inserts there and they come in matched pairs. So there'll be a zero, zero, plus five, minus five, plus 10, minus 10. Um, those matched pairs are meant to be used together. So if you go plus five bottom, you would go minus five top. And that will keep the overall dimensions you need to fill out this ring, right? If you're subtracting five here and you're adding five here, you should be net zero. And so this should fit perfectly. The other advertised benefit of using these is that with these inserts, they are non-marring or non-marking. So when you ever, if you decide to change the scope or take these off, your scope should be just as new as the day you bought it. Now, why do you want to cant your scope? Well, when you're shooting at long ranges, you may run out of come-ups, right? You, you got to dial your scope up and you may run out of those. This particular rifle that this is going on, this is going to be for a new precision long range shooter, has a Picatinny rail that already is mounted at 20 MOA. So you automatically already get that number of come-ups. Whether or not you need to add cant to your rifle depends on if you have a rail that already has MOA built into it, or if your scope doesn't have enough adjustments in it to get you where you need to be. For example, my scope has 90 MOA adjustment range, which would be 45 up, 45 down, the equivalent of 26 mils. Accounting for the 20 MOA that's already on the rail, that puts the number of adjustments at minus seven mils to plus 19 mils, right? This, these inserts, every five, um, insert every five MOA would change both sides of that equation by 1.5, 1.45 mils. So I probably don't, I can probably get by with zero, zero, but I'll probably go ahead and just add five more. If you add too much, um, the rake, the, the angle of that can't might be so great that it's impossible to zero your rifle at a hundred, which if you want to zero at 200, isn't a big deal for me. However, this is an MRAD scope that um, allows me to take advantage of the metric system. So I will zero at a hundred meters so I can take full advantage of not having to convert to the Imperial system and rely on inches and MOA. I can do a lot more math in my head when everything is 10 base rather than um, based on fractions. So when you're mounting your scope and you're thinking about can't, you might think, well, I'll, I'll, if they, this is the muzzle and the front of the scope, I'm, uh, I'm going to aim it up so that then I would have to come down to meet that point of impact to zero, and that will free up the come ups. Remember, when we're thinking about up and down adjustments, we're talking about adjusting the point of impact on the paper. So actually, you want to cant the front down or the back up or some combination thereof, right? So that on paper, the bullet is going to look like it's high. You want it point of impact to come down. So you'll click down, 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 down. Now you're zeroed and all those downs that you had to click free up come ups on your scope. That way you won't run out of elevation when you're trying to shoot at long ranges. Um, overall, these things feel like they're pretty solidly made, pretty well built. I will check torque specifications and share those with you during the install. I'm sure they're in this sheet. I've seen someone say it's around 15 to um, 17 inch pounds. To be uh, accurate with that, we will be using our Wheeler fat wrench. There are probably more precise torque wrenches. Now they make one of these things in a digital. 
you always want to store these on zero. Uh, I'm not sure why it's probably to do with the tensioning spring, but we'll just dial this up to the appropriate setting and then crank those screws down and this thing will, um, will click over just like a torque wrench does once we're at the right um, torque setting. It's important to have all your stuff torqued to the correct specifications and you kind of want to do them like you would do with lug nuts on your tire, right? So boom, 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 or boom, boom. That's how I do them. I try to go opposites. Uh, make sure that you get the right diameter scope ring. Clearly that's important. Uh, these are 34 millimeters and that's what you get. You do get this handy little box. It looks like it has a uh, kind of a waterproof seal. This might be good for uh, my dry flies or something else that you don't want to get wet out in the field, but it's a nice little way that they package these up. They do come with the five MOA inserts already put in, uh, in one of them. This other one does not have it, right? So it's five on one side and none on the other, which would mean if I'm going five, a cant of five, I would go zero on the front and then the, the five in the back to go plus, and that'll get that cant that we had just discussed a moment ago. The other interesting thing about these is that, as I mentioned, these inserts are supposed to not mark up your scope. The inserts can also spin. So right now they're center center where the seam of the insert matches the seam of the ring. But the nice thing about having them be able to spin spin is if you have a slight windage adjustment that needs to be made as you're getting on your zero, you don't have to mess with your windage turret. If you spin this, this insert because the one side is fatter and the other side is thinner, right? Plus five, minus five. If you spin it one way, it will move your windage over slightly. And if you spin it the other way, it'll move the windage over slightly the other way. This way you should be able to get pretty close to zero, at least at like whatever your bore side or it'll shoot. I'm gonna to try to do mine at 25 meters, get on zero, go to the range, get on paper, and then take it right to 100 and then, and then 200 and, and that should be it. We should be good to go. Um, and it's nice to be able to get pretty close to that without having to start messing with your turrets right off the bat. That's the idea. We'll see how it works in practice. Pretty well bits, built stuff from Burris. Um, I hope uh, you got something out of this. The, I like this instead of the, uh, the one piece that has both rings on a rail. If that rail is bent or torqued in any way, there's nothing you can really do to fix it. And when you have separate rings, you can choose how far apart that you want to put them on your rail. And um, also, I just kind of like a minimalist approach. And when you have an existing rail, meant to take two rings, adding another rail on top of it. I just try to prevent bolting more stuff on than is necessary for the task at hand. So there you have it, guys. The Burris XTR signature rings with the uh, cant adjustment inserts. Um, pretty nice package so far. We'll get them mounted up and see how they do. Hope you got something out of this. I uh, hope you enjoy the channel. Please like the video or subscribe, and I will keep these coming. Thank you so much. Have a great day.